We were dispatched to a uh, light rail vehicle, a light rail train that was heading southbound, Meadowview train. They came into contact with a uh, passenger vehicle, it's a black Nissan uh, Pathfinder. Uh, there's four, four people in the Pathfinder and don't know the circumstances, but the train southbound and came into contact with the Nissan Pathfinder. It looks like it rolled a couple of times and uh, ejected uh, at least one person. And this ends up being a multi-casualty incident, meaning that there are enough patients where we're, we're out, we're doing triage um, from the injuries that occurred on the train, uh, minor bumps and bruises. Uh, to the three fatalities that occurred uh, in the vehicle. Um, right now we're continuing to triage, go through the people trying to get the most critical transported first, and uh, we've notified the disaster control facility, the local hospital, which is coordinating where all these patients are going, so we don't impact uh, any one emergency room in the region. Uh, right now we're looking into uh, what caused the accident. But right now what I can tell you is that we have three people deceased. Uh, there was um, one person that's in critical condition that was transported to an area hospital. Those four people that were in that vehicle, uh, three of them are uh, are deceased, uh, two adults and one infant. There was a, a lady that was transported to, to an area hospital and she is in critical condition at this time. On the train there was about 50 passengers and out of those 50, about 17 of them were triaged here by the, by the Sacramento Fire Department. Six of those, uh, 17, were actually transported to an area hospital for some type of minor injury. Yeah, right now we're not saying, you know, what what exactly happened. Our investigators are looking at that and we're working closely with the RT officials to find out what exactly happened. Uh, she tried to go around the tracks and she got hit. And by the time we got over there, there was one on the tra railroad track and the rest of them were. I checked their pulses. There was only one pulse that I. Uh, and the little kid that was still alive, so that was, you know, that, that's basically it. You know, we were just trying to cut them out, trying to get them out the car, but they were most of them were unconscious. Drivers, they have to be patient. Oftentimes, the train tracks uh, or the, the crossing arms will be down, and people just don't want to wait. Um, we're not saying that's what happened here, but there's too many times where people want to go around those crossing arms and don't realize that maybe another train is coming. So this is you know, a good opportunity for just to, to remind people that those trains, those arms do come down for a reason, and never, ever, ever go around them. If you feel that maybe there's something wrong or a malfunction, go go around it, or, or you can call via the local light rail station, but don't, don't ever cross on a red. We have several people, uh, obviously, that came into contact with uh, an incident that's, that's, you know, it's it's a lot of graphic things that they're having to deal with, patients that are badly injured. Um, and immediately after this, we turn to our emergency responders and make sure that they're going to get the assistance that they need. Uh, there's some young people um, that ended up being the fatalities here. And so we're going to start transitioning and taking care of our own people, going to our critical incident stress debriefing and uh, making sure they're okay and can finish the shift. And, and, and that's a great point because uh, our responders see a lot. They and see a lot and it's something that's uh, not touched on. I mean, definitely the story is the tragedy that happens here, but um, this is it's just it's another shift for these emergency responders and it takes its toll. So uh, we have to continue to care for each other and make sure that uh, they're getting the assistance that they're going to need to continue to do the job. Great.